I'm probably gonna go home to the shower and cry. Hi, this is Lucy and this is Ignacio. Thank you so much for accepting to talk with me today. I appreciate it. I have a sign with three questions for animal lovers. Are you an animal yes. lover? Yes, I am. What do you think about animal abuse or people who abuse animals? I think it's very wrong. It's bad. It's a hard thing to really distinguish animal abuse, especially nowadays. Like animal production for consumers. It can be hard to really know where the food is coming. People definitely have a detachment and maybe don't know exactly what goes through to get that food to their table. Actually, it comes exactly perfectly with what you said. Do you think harm, exploitation or abuse happens on animal farms or in slaughterhouses? I think it does, but not necessarily everywhere. Generalization is another thing that hurts, usually the subject, because people have a very black and white stance usually. I don't think it never helps find a solution because then you just get like opposing views instead of like mm. finding common ground. Yeah, makes sense. That question is a little touchy, but yeah. I really get it because I used to do it for a long time as well. Yeah. Do you eat cows, pigs, fish, eggs, milk or well leather for example? Yes, I do. Would it be okay if I show you a three minute video on the standard practices in animal agriculture? Yes, of course. Awesome. I'm very excited about this interview. I don't often have people in interviews who are studying animal agriculture. I mean animal agriculture and plant agriculture. Yeah. So it's gonna be interesting, I think, to hear your perspective. Unwanted runs are commonly killed by violently slamming their heads against the floor, a practice known as thumping. Though many consumers put their trust in foods labeled humane, free range, or organic, Animals raised for these foods suffer in horrific conditions their entire lives. Thank you so much for, yeah. for standing of through course. that. So how did that make you feel watching this video? Guilty, as always. I have watched videos like that before mm -hmm. and it's never nice. Can I make you a of question? Of course, of course, go ahead. Is more intelligent life more worth it? Okay, I see what you mean. Uh, Is yes. intelligent life more important? Than less than... intelligent? Like, how do we... The reason I'm starting agricultural business is because I think the solution is definitely improve the practices, change the practices and battle it in the ground of ideas and market. That's a lot of times where you see the most improvement because consumers get to vote more with their money than with their votes usually. Their votes goes to politicians that not necessarily represent how they feel uh -huh. like. Can you see what you mean? You know, people go around policies. If you develop a farm regenerative holistically or you like race humanely, cows and pigs and people can see you doing that and that you give them the choice the other question is like how are we gonna feed the world because it's not that we just kill animals to make food of animals we kill animals to grow plants too and like insects and bugs and mm -hmm. fungi even bacteria fungus i don't know all that is life too that we're getting rid of usually for monocrop agriculture we we're planting soy and we were planting maize or corn that's a hard feed how do we feed the world i think it's a hard question i definitely get sad I'm, you know i'm probably gonna go home to the shower and cry after seeing that video but i definitely think we can reduce the amount of meat we consume but also we have to be aware that it necessarily consuming a type of food not fix the problem you know mm -hmm. the first question was about the humane, humane. way to do it or was yeah. it it was yeah the humane the like yeah. raising mm -hmm. it humanely you okay. know, not having it in crates and do all the awful, so you awful believe stuff. in making the practices better so that the yes. animals yeah makes sense <laughs> i think no one disagrees with that right yeah my question to answer this question because yes. i want to know your perspective more than anything yeah is how do you humanely kill someone who doesn't want to die and by someone i mean animals or people i don't think I think we, that's where we have to accept that the world is destined to have a recycling of energies. Because again, if you go to the deep question of biology, and that's why I asked the, the question, is more intelligence life? Mm, yeah, that was the first question. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can go ask professors here, but like plant science professors that will tell you how plants communicate between mm -hmm. them, how fungi communicate between them, how fungi communicate with plants. And that's where things start getting sketchy because then you cannot do anything you cannot kill anything it's and so i do think there is a humanly way to do it. it's a respectful way of integrating yourself in nature where you're not being invasive and i think that's how we categorize animals too usually we don't have problems when animals reproduce or plants or fungi reproduce in a certain rate where it's mm. not invasive mm -hmm. where it's that's not true. like consuming anything around it and destroying the ec ecosystem we got to be part of that ecosystem but not necessarily destroy it Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of these practices are destroying the ecosystem. Well, if we make the 
practice is better. We'll still be killing stuff, but stuff kills stuff and stuff dies. At the end of the day, it's a sacrifice we gotta do with care, but it's still a sacrifice we gotta do. Plants, I agree. Or, I mean, it's not even yeah. that I agree. It's just a fact that they are living beings, right? Yeah. Would you say there's differences between pulling a carrot of the ground, for example, and cutting it and slitting the throat of an animal? I think there is. That's the thing. I think sometimes we are subjective in the way we see mammals, especially. We can relate more to them. It doesn't mean they're more important. Oh, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, so I think yeah. this is a good segue into answering your first question, yeah. actually. Is the life of a more intelligent being more important than the less intelligent being? Like, you would say humans are more intelligent than plants in many ways, right? And yeah. than animals in many ways. I'll answer by question again. Yeah. <laughs> and That's you'll know my answer that way. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say that it's okay to go ahead and shoot someone who is less intelligent than you, for example, like a baby? Yeah, no. Okay, what is not. the difference between that, basically saying, well, I'm more intelligent, right, so I can do it, and doing that with an animal? None. No. That's my answer. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. You mentioned, it's a very good point actually, it's called pretty much crop deaths, right? Yeah. When in plant agriculture, you're just gonna have a level of basically accidents, right? Of mm. mice, etc. and insects. And we don't like anything touching our crops, so we have to use pesticides most of the time to kill insects and bugs, fungi, that interferes with the growing of those crops. When you are doing a holistic way of farming, you usually have cows grazing, free range, chickens, whatever, they are grazing on a land that is full of life, full of insects. Their manure makes everything grow. That's kind of good. And we managing cattle that way in the sense that we may not be the best when we try to grow because we have this mindset of grow. Everything has to be more and more. And I think that's where we miss the point. Again, I think it's the same for animals as it is for plants. The problem is not, I think, necessarily eating the animals. It's the way we grow animals to eat them. And it's, I don't think the problem is eating plants. It's the way we grow plants to eat them. Mm -hmm. In both, we can see how we disturb the ecosystems. We end up killing and affecting the environment more than we should. Again, we're always going to end up killing stuff. Even if you can see your plants being alive, we're going to end up killing them. It's just, is it necessary to do the practices how we do it? And if not, how are we going to do it? And that's the hard question. How are we going to feed people, you know? Have you heard of the studies that show that animal mm. agriculture is one of the leading causes of environmental destruction? Yes. Yep. Some studies have shown that if you cut animal agriculture out, you would be able to gain 75% of the land back yes. and rewild it, for example. It's going to address several things you mentioned, like the crop deaths. I'm a vegan, as you yeah. probably have noticed already. <laughs> and obviously, I'm not liking the crop death thing. Yeah. Have you ever heard of veganic agriculture? Maybe. It's the idea of reducing as much as possible the accidents that happen yeah. in this way. And so the way that vegans kind of look at the crop death thing is that in any industry, for example, in construction, there's yeah. always accidents, unfortunately, <laughs> that happen to humans and there's deaths that happen for this industry to, to work. And we want to reduce it to the maximum possible, but we do need to eat. <laughs> you know, when you mentioned the plants, would you say that they feel pain like animals do? Well, we're not sure yet. I don't think so. I think a lot of people are studying that. You definitely have a lot of videos showing plants reacting to human touch, plants reacting to sun. Sunflowers are a perfect example. They follow the sun. Carnivorous plants can detect when something gets in. I think there's definitely a lot of more going on with plants that we actually understand because they're further apart from us. So we have more travel understanding. Yeah, fungi, from fungi, so yeah, too. a lot further. So that's why I think I don't disagree with you. I think we have to meet in the middle because I think it's not an easy solution. And when you say if we cut all animal industry, again, the problem there is like feeding the population in an effective way. I mean, Americans are definitely pretty lucky in the sense that you have a lot of access to food. You don't spend as much of your salary in food as a lot of other countries. I think it's like 20% to 30% of your salary goes to food like most in the rest of the world especially third world countries 80 90 percent of mm -hmm. salary goes to food that's a big stretch you know and definitely easier to change things here and we, especially with technology i can see how for example urban agriculture can be a thing mm -hmm. where people can cut the supply chains where i think a lot of the problem is too with what it's contamination also you have 
a relationship with that food you're growing. I think that there's no one solution. That's where I'm trying to go. I think there's a lot of, sol of different small solutions. We have to work together to find them out. And definitely if you know a local farmer that raises or plants things in a way you like, reach out, buy from, from them. They prefer to sell to you directly. There's, there's ways we can go around the system sometimes, but it's hard because regular citizen maybe not doesn't have the time. Maybe they're doing enough to pay their bills. I think sometimes we're harsh with people and that just makes them like go inside and like just resent the subject more than actually have an active approach to it. Well, if we encourage them to like, hey, grow your own tomatoes, you know, learn this. That I think kind of happened during quarantine a little bit. People got cooking more, planting, gardening more. Yeah, but I think it has to be like a reconciling discussion, mm -hmm. definitely. I and, agree. Yeah. Have you heard of this uh, 2021 Oxford study that says vegans tend to spend 30% less on food? On food? Yeah, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. yeah, it's so awesome. Yeah, fruit and vegetables are cheaper. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's an access thing a lot of times. The thing is, fruit and vegetables deteriorate mm -hmm. a lot faster. Then Meat you can freeze. Meat you can process and it lasts a lot longer. But can't you freeze like, veggies? Yeah, you can freeze veggies, but it's a lot less like common I felt I feel like and like it's hard because of the volume like you get a lot more volume of nutrition in like a pack of meat I'm, I'm saying this for the poor countries not for America again America it's it maybe an easier calorie solution dense, you mean? calorie density like uh -huh. in transportation that's a big thing again I think in undeveloped countries mostly like again and America is not that big of a statement to make mm -hmm. but uh, would you say that it's easier for a third world country citizen to access beans or meat? Beans, beans are a good one. Beans are, yeah, you can get them. I guess they are in conserve. Yeah, they last they're a long time. They're pretty calorie dense yeah. too. They're calorie dense. Yeah, and they're super cheap. <laughs> yeah. How do we feed the world, right? Because yeah. this is the way that we have been feeding, especially the West, for a long time, right? And it's, like you said, calorie dense. There are like 80 billion land animals, meaning farm animals, uh, in the world every year that are like killed. We have 8 billion people, right? Which one would you say takes more crops for feed? Well, it depends. Cattle is definitely the less feed efficient, but like feed, uh, fish is just as efficient and it provides with a lot. But I wouldn't say like farming fish is necessarily the most reasonable thing to do either. But uh, yeah, fish I think it's one to one, poultry and swine is two to one and cattle is like four to one. The nutrient density of meat is a lot higher than hay, which is what we are feeding cows. That is something to take into account. Into account. The, the crops, it's a conversion process what is happening. It's not that the cow is just eating that food and we could eat that food. They're eating that food and turning it into something a lot more valuable for the human body. It's not like a straight linear equation, which is what a lot of times they make it seem like. I don't think it's a yes or no answer. I think you are right. We definitely are inefficient in the way maybe we use land to raise crops for feed to cattle. The cow is very efficient in doing this conversion process, which we still don't necessarily know how to do with crops. Maybe genetically modified crops may help in some sense, but also they're also dangerous because we have adapted to eat certain kinds of food. When we manipulate genetics, it just takes a while to really see if they have a secondary effect. So what are kind of the nutrients that are in meat that we wouldn't find? Well, the, the viability of protein is a lot higher. So your body can process and decompose that that protein, like the protein synthesis done with meat is a lot more efficient. So let's say you have 20 grams of protein in half a pound of meat. I think it's probably more there, but you will probably be able to digest 19, 18% of the protein. But broccoli, first, you know, you have to eat it all raw or just like cook just enough. I guess as soon as it starts like losing the color, it will lose a lot of their nutrients. And then the body is not as good as digesting. So say if you have in a pound of broccoli, you have 50 grams of protein, you'll just absorb maybe 25. Your body is not as efficient as absorbing nutrients in some veggies. And then the other issue, I think it's education mainly. I don't think it's necessarily that you cannot eat a vegan diet or vegetarian diet. I think people just sometimes turn vegetarian, vegan and just go to diets that don't really serve them mm -hmm. well because it's artificial oils, which your body's not good at dealing with that. If you are smart enough, you can definitely get everything I think you just need to maybe supplement vitamin B12. Like 
omnivores actually you know yeah. like animals are supplemented in b12 oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, we, and we supplement cows exactly like we give cows b12 <laughs> so it's like, yeah yeah it's yeah. it's not yeah, yeah it, it's not a big deal yeah, no yeah. no that's what i'm saying no. you can supplements sometimes are expensive and again it's like not a maybe a big deal for europe or america in north yeah. america but maybe if you go to south america if you go to africa or southeast asia then things start getting harder because like mm. those people they don't have the resources they don't have the education it's a big barrier i mean it's good to be proactive it's good to do this we are doing here having these discussions and trying to find ways i think more people are pushing towards the same side and we don't notice sometimes because we're so used to being polarized especially by mm. news and media mm, yeah it seems sometimes like we're alone in whatever yeah. side of the it's fence a lot we of are. misunderstandings yeah. i feel like it's very easy to misunderstand uh, especially when people get triggered yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure oh you said something that i wanted to touch on that was interesting ah oh man Maybe. oh yeah